Hello and welcome to the what is usually the Adam and Rose show, but today is going to be the Adam. Well, I'm going to leave that uh, blank for the time being. Uh, who's going to be my guest joining me? Uh, the reason why it's slightly different today is that uh, we're going to have a special guest on instead of Row. So I'm going to reveal all in a moment. But uh, before I do that, if this is the first time you're stopping by the channel, please do make sure you hit the subscribe button. Uh, and yeah, and also leave us your comments in the YouTube section below. What we usually do on this show is uh, obviously answer some of your questions from last week. So if you have got anything for myself or Ro when he comes back next time, please leave it in the comments and, and we'll do our best to answer. We also usually ask a trivia question. Now, this week we're going to miss out the trivia question, but I am going to give you the answer to the last one. Uh, the question being... What who, out of from the Hardy family, who has got the highest win percentage ratio? And it was good to see that quite a lot of you actually did catch on that I wasn't actually talking about just Matt and Jeff Hardy, it is indeed King Maxwell. So, well done to all of those who got it. We'll make sure we go through all the winners on the proper show when we get. Uh, row back on. So I did say that this is usually the Adam and Row show, which is our news review. We cover a lot of the news topics. And what we're going to do today is we've got a special guest on. And in a moment, I'm going to be joined by Sammy Callahan. So effectively, tonight's show is going to be the Adam and Sammy show. Stay tuned and we'll be back in a moment. All right, that's me back. Uh, I'm glad to say now Sammy's on the phone. Evening, Sammy. How you doing, man? I am on the phone. You are correct about that one. And where is that phone that you are on? Are you in Ohio tonight? I am in Ohio. I'm actually home for once. I'm sitting on my couch right now doing this interview while I do toting for a website project I'm working on. Uh, do you want to tell us more about that before we kick off then? What's this website? Is it uh, OV stuff? Is it wrestling revolver stuff? What, what, what is it? It's actually a wrestling revolver site. Uh, I'm streamlining uh, my company, the Wrestling Revolver, which uh, I run WrestleMania shows every year. I run big shows all over the country in the United States. Uh, I've worked with Fight Club Pro in England. Uh, but uh, I'm actually working on streamlining a brand new website with this new exclusive content that we're going to launch a bunch of uh, new content out of and uh, really work to bring this thing to the next step. So... Wrestling Revolver, um, obviously, whenever we see on any other shows, you know, it's usually absolutely mad stuff. Uh, so what can we expect if we come along to a Wrestling Revolver show? What are we going to see there? Wrestling Revolver is actually a company that me, David Jake, started together uh, right when I quit WWE. Uh, and our, our tagline is wrestling for our generation, by our generation. It's our vision of wrestling, what we like about wrestling, what we see in wrestling and it's a place for us to give young guys an opportunity to wrestle some top guys it's also places that have dream matches big matches like this uh our last event was absolutely insane we had walter versus pcl a rematch from the matches that they've had all over the world that people love to see we had jimmy jacobs versus jt dunn a coal miners glove we had a cage of horrors match that was ode versus Shane Strickland, Jason Cade, and Matthew Palmer, and Rich Swan. There, there, there's so many different avenues that we can get to with this. Uh, we're gearing up for our December show right now, which is entitled Holiday Hangover. It has Tommy Dreamer on it, has OVE on it, has the Rascals on it, has a, a plethora of people on this event along with Brian Cage. And then we're also gearing up for our WrestleMania weekend show. We have third annual Pancakes and Pile Drivers. We already have the Dragon Eat talent side to compete. We have... Brody King, Pentagon Jr., Phoenix, myself, David, Jake, the Rascals, pretty much anyone that you'd want to see out of the indie realm at a show at WrestleMania weekend. So, so not, mu not much going on is what you're trying to say? Yeah, a lot. <laughs> not much at all. <laughs> anyway, well, that, that was pretty comprehensive. I've got to be honest with you. That's, that's great. And, uh, you know, obviously, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll keep up to speed on that and we'll, we'll report back on it on our channel as well. Now, one of the things you mentioned there uh, about... You, you wanted to launch that company and stuff that you loved and all those kind of things. On our show last week, you know, we cover a lot of the news. And one of the things that we covered was an Eli Drake interview where he basically turned around and said he hates flippy shit wrestling. You know, people doing spots all over the place, etc. He loved wrestling growing up about characters, big characters. Let's face it, there isn't much of a bigger character in wrestling more than you now. But is that your kind of thing as well? Because I know you do a lot of spots which are, you know, memorable as well. But what's your idea of wrestling? My idea of wrestling is whatever you want it to be. That's the great thing about wrestling. I don't think one style is right. Professional wrestling is flavors of ice cream. People are going to like vanilla. Some people are going to like strawberry. Some people are going to like both. 
Uh, but my aspect of wrestling, I like a buffet. I like to have the characters. I have to have I like the crazy spots. I like to have a little bit of hardcore. I like to have a little bit of comedy. I like to have a throwback to the old times. I like to have a little bit of everything because I like a little bit of everything. I don't like just one style. I like every style of professional wrestling, and that's something that me, myself, uh, Dave, and Jay Chris, like that's that's our beliefs in wrestling. That's wrestling for our generation, by our generation, and wrestling for our generation, by our generation pretty much means like wrestling can be whatever you want it to be that's the great thing about professional wrestling now just before i move on to the news of this week uh obviously you run your own company there and your own promotion you you know we're talking to you today because we're huge fans of impact and what you've been doing in, in impact wrestling how much constraint is put on you in impact wrestling what, what you want to do uh, and or, you know what, what's what do you like about impact wrestling you know it, it, what's the good points and the bad points of it well, I'm building my body of work with Impact Wrestling to where I'm to the point that if I have an idea or I go a little bit off script, a lot of times they're going to take a step back and let me be me, and that's the great thing about Impact Wrestling right now. They're actually giving all of us a chance to be and do what we want, and that's why Impact Wrestling is striving right now. That's why in the last year, with help um, myself, Dave, Jay, Chris, and the, the rest of the roster, as we're out there killing ourselves, we've... We, truly proven that impact wrestling can be good again and impact wrestling is in the the forefront again and people are going to start talking about impact wrestling again who would have thought that in 2018 absolutely absolutely well um moving on from that then we're going to move on to the news and there's one, one thing that i wanted to bring up first of all is that you know obviously you're uh, a bit of a hardcore specialist you know when i saw you in manchester you were facing jimmy havoc in in what was the first hardcore match that i saw and it was it was, it was great i really really enjoyed it but uh, this week there's been a lot of news about hardcore wrestling um one of them i want to touch on first was the david arquette match um did you see any of this and, and what do you think about david arquette himself i watched all of it i watched all of it. And I'm not gonna lie, I loved it. But I think David Arquette knew what he was getting into when he got in the ring with Nick Gage. Nick Gage is one of the most terrifying wrestlers on the planet today, and he has a reputation for a reason. Like, but David also, I think, realizes that wrestling isn't just this joke. He's actually going in, and he wants to be looked at as not just an actor. He wants to be looked at. He's a guy that's trying to prove himself in pro wrestling. He's he's going to towns. He's wrestling people. He's wrestling different styles. And he stepped in there to a match that he probably wasn't ready to step into, and that's what happens. Like, when you have two professionals, one thing's going to happen. When you have a guy that's a professional, a guy that's trying to be a professional, doing something as violent and as deadly and as dangerous as deathmatch wrestling that that's what you're going to get and i think david arquette also opened a lot of eyes he may regret his decision a little bit but at the same point the entire wrestling world's talking about that one incident as a promoter yourself would you put him in that position if you knew that it was that kind of match and you thought you might have been in over his head would, would you put him there Maybe Game Changer is doing something correct. Their shows are selling out all over the country. They have one of the biggest WrestleMania shows of the year. They're doing something right, so you can't say that was wrong because the world is talking about it, and the WrestleMania show is already sold out. So are you going to book David for WrestleMania weekend? Uh, David Arquette actually debuted back in the wrestling world at my show last year. Oh, that was his first time stepping back at the end of my main event. He got the ring cut a promo calling out the best season of the world. Matt Fitchett and Davey Vega. That started this whole David Arquette trip. Fine. Well, just following on from that then, obviously he's a well, Hollywood actor. Uh, well, he was a Hollywood actor, although I think he's got quite a few things coming out. Can we expect to see you in Suburban Commando 2 anytime soon? 100%. I would be the lead in Suburban Commando 2, and I, I, I'd do a one-man show about Suburban Commando if I could. I love that movie. I'm not going to lie. You can't diss on Suburban Commando. You can't diss on Mr. Nanny. Back in the days when we were children and wrestling fans, even though they're really not that great of movies, they were great to us. Yeah. I, I was only saying it in jest about the actual sequel, but I mean, is that a plan of yours to get into uh, Hollywood at all, if you can? Maybe. Uh, that's a, I have an acting background. I've taken acting classes. Uh, you see by my promos, I can talk behind the microphone. Uh, that's something I may look into in the future. You never know. I may do some stunt work. I may do some movies one day. But right now, I'm concentrating on running my wrestling promotion. I'm concentrating on being the top professional wrestler in the world today. So I really don't have time for that at the moment. Fair enough. Well, I want to move, just move on to one final bit of news this week uh, about hardcore wrestling. Uh, there was an incident, I think it was down in Mexico, and the wrestler was something 
Puerto Rico. So a lot of people got confused it was in Puerto Rico. But basically, it was a hardcore match, which turned into a bit of a shoot where a guy took a few too many stiff chair shots and then threw a cinder block. Did, did you see this incident, and what did you make of yeah, it? Yeah, and that that's completely uncalled for. I think that incident, yeah, you're going too far. That was, But I think that's just going to paint hardcore wrestling into a bad light. It wasn't that it was just a hardcore match. The dude went through the back, he got a brick, and threw it at another guy. That, that, that's not hardcore wrestling is at its essence. There's a lot of great hardcore wrestling, so I hate that hardcore wrestling is going to get lumped into this. That was a, a moment of a guy getting mad, going to the back, trying to injure someone in the middle of the ring. That's a completely different circumstance to me, and that is one of the most grotesque things I've ever seen. But also, they're both at fault for that. If it's going to get crazy like that, so we're going to walk for a break, you know what I did? I would just walk to the back. I'd be like, this match is done. This match is done. We ain't doing this no more. Or if I got mad like that, I'm probably just going to go to the back and be like, this match is done. I'm not going to go to the back and get a brick and throw it at someone. That's trying to injure someone, trying to kill someone. Have you ever been in, in a locker room where someone has, has shot on someone like that? And I, I mean, let's just say you're in the back there. What, what would, would you confront the guy? Would you, would you say Absolutely. to me? Absolutely. I hope the entire locker room would confront the guy, give him his stuff and tell him to get out of our locker room. Because at that point, like, that's not, this is a brotherhood. This is we're supposed to protect each other, and sometimes things may go a little awry, but that's just crossing the line. Fair enough. All right. Well, well, moving away from from well, not moving away from hardcore, but moving back to to impact and, and your career and impact. Uh, one of the things that really kind of launched you into the stratosphere on impact was the incident with Eddie Edwards. And I'm not going to go into you know what happened and those kind of things because we all know that it wasn't intentional uh, how it played out. But obviously, it got turned into a story. Now, are you quite comfortable with things like that getting turned into stories? Do you think that, on reflection, that's something that you're glad happened, uh, or do you? I'm 100 kind of... glad it, glad it happened. I think Eddie glad, Edwards might be glad it happened because it put our careers on a different avenue and a different route that we weren't on before and it changed both of our careers for the better we both sold a lot of merch with that we both were able to launch ourselves into a different echelon of wrestling and be perceived a different way it was the best thing that happened to both of our careers and like anyone that wants to sell it sell definitely doesn't know the story doesn't know what actually happened that's why i don't understand why people like nia Jax are going to get so much heat from the crowd that oh my gosh like they ask for violence. They ask for people to be rough. They want realism. Then when you give them realism, they're going to bitch and complain about it. Absolutely. Uh, you couldn't have said that any better, Sammy. I'm, I'm completely with you there. Anyone who Shit says, happens. A... Shit happens. This is a very dangerous sport, and things happen. But at the same point, we know the risks that we're going to put ourselves into as soon as we step through those, those, those ropes. That's why it's a little different than a guy being in a hardcore match and a guy in the middle of a match walking to the back and getting a brick to hit you with. That's why I hate that hardcore wrestling is there to be painted in with that if. Or, or tells you to stop throwing chairs around, things like that. I mean, <laughs> I and made a lot of money off that too. <laughs> I, I just always find it incredible um, when people get offended at wrestling. I just I find it bizarre that someone watches something, as you say, near Jax or you hitting Eddie with a baseball bat and then saying that's going too far or the LAX getting run over by, by the OGs. You know, I always find it Undertaker bizarre that people say... Undertaker struck a man with a lightning bolt. Nothing is going to be too far. We are in a different realm. We're in a different universe. We're in a different world. That's why I hate that professional wrestling is going to be crucified for being a entertainment show and also be crucified for being real like it can't be crucified on the same plane on both ends of the field spot on if there's a sound bite from this show that's taken it should be that one right so um yeah just going back to to impact then obviously last week you challenged for the x division title looks like that's going to become vacant soon uh how do you feel about challenging in that division because let's face it when you debuted i don't think anyone would have thought actually we're going to have brian cage versus sammy callahan in an X division style match, but what, what do you mean how, how is that any different? But I, I, that's why I didn't understand about, Oh, I, I, that's not what the X division is. How is that not what the X division is? Samoa Joe and AJ Styles fought for that belt hundreds of times. And it's one of the best matches in the world. Made that belt, you know what it is today, and made it the equivalent to a world championship. So why can't we do that in 2018? Why can't we do the exact same thing that they did that made impact great before? Now, I'm not going to disagree with you there. But I think a lot of people these days see it as 
almost like a cruiserweight title. Do you think that's a, been a fault of impact over the last few years that they have turned it into that kind of, you know, that cruiserweight up until the last six months? But at the same point, that's to the fans not reading or not doing any research. The whole thing behind the exhibition since its inception has always been it's not about weight limits. It's about no limits. It says it right in the moniker for the championship. That's why I don't understand why people, oh, it's a cruiserweight title. It's not a cruiserweight title. It's not about weight limits. It's about no limits. And that's the, the end of that. There's no fighting that. There's no facts. There's no other opinions. That's what the exclusion title is. Once again, don't, don't disagree with you on that one, Sammy. But uh, I'm just talking about the way it has been booked in the, in the last few years. Not, not, not so much now. Because, you know, you and Brian have done some stellar work in the matches. And, and certainly, you know, the other thing I wanted to bring up is, is your feud with uh, the Lucha Brothers as well. What do, you, what do you think it is about you and OVE that can get anyone over? What, 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 what do you think it is that you bring to, to the We're pro? Because... We're the most versatile professional wrestlers walking this planet today. We can wrestle any style. That's the thing. Like, lately, we may have been booked to fight hardcore blood matches, but at the same point, we're the guys that can wrestle Lucha, we're the guys that can wrestle British strong style, we're the guys that can wrestle American strong style, Japanese strong style, we're the guys that can do Lucha Libre, we're the guys that can do any aspect of professional wrestling and succeed about it. Because that's what we've done our entire career. We've built up our body of work to be ready for anything the world throws at us. Do you get frustrated when people think of you more as a, a hardcore wrestler as opposed to, I mean, let's face it, in that lucha, uh, when you were facing um, uh, Pentagon and, and, and Phoenix, you, you put on absolutely amazing quality ring work in there. Do you think it sometimes gets overlooked and does that frustrate you? That's just people not doing the research. Like, people don't just automatically think, Pentagon Jr. is a death match wrestler, even though he's done, she's just running about more than me in Mexico and around the world. But my thing is, some of those matches have gotten a little bit higher praise. Some of those matches have gotten a little bit more exposure. But at the same point, I, I think I've proven in my body of work, you look at me two years ago, I'm not the wrestler I am now. Or you look at me two years from now, I'm not the wrestler that I am now. I like to evolve and do different styles. There was one point in my career where I was all technical wrestling and strong stuff. There's another point in my career where it's all been hardcore. There's another point in my career where I was working lucha, quick, Dragon Gate style matches because I like to evolve and do something different so I don't get bored. So I get bored really, really easily. And right now, technical wrestling bores me. But deathmatch wrestling and hardcore wrestling and telling those kind of stories really gets me off at the end of the day. But in a year from now, I may switch back to loving technical wrestling. I may switch back to only want to do lucha or do cruiserweight wrestling. But that's what makes me me. I can do any style there is out there and succeed at it. So, so what's next for you and the, the Chris Brothers in Impact? Are you going to be sticking around for the long run or are you going to be going much more onto the, the wrestling revolver shows? Is that something that you're going to concentrate more on? Wrestling Revolver is always going to be a, a main focus of mine and getting that to the next level and really pushing it. But I have a great relationship with Impact that they help me out done talent exchanges. They've done Twitch shows with my events. Uh, but at the same point, me, Dave, and Jake just signed a big new deal with Impact Wrestling. We'll be there for at least the next 18 months. Uh, and maybe past that, you don't know. But right now, we're happy doing what we're doing, and our job and our work at Impact isn't done until we become world champion, tag team champions, and truly change that business for what it's going to be. Now, just as you mentioned the Chris Brothers there, um, we, on our show, we get people commenting all the time and saying that they're not a fan of the mini draw. I personally think it's, it's, it's hilarious. Um, but whose idea was that, by the way? Is that something that came from creative or is that something that you guys uh, brought to the table? Uh, it's something actually Jake does to me all the time that people thought was funny. And uh, it's kind of just something that's me and our characters now are pretty much me, Dave, and Jake in real life. Jake is always making jokes, and then me and Dave have jokes that we run on Dave, that Dave's old man Dave Thatcher. He's the old one that's very angry, and everything annoys him. That's us in real life, that's us on camera. That's why it works so well. Do you know that the highlight for me has been Dave's look of disbelief and indifference every time that Jake's doing something? It always cracks me up. But, um, yeah, I was going to ask about the two of them. Uh, who won that round of golf, by the way? Because uh, last time you were on the teleconference, you, you, I think uh, Dave, Dave Gordon... likes to think he's the best. He's, he's probably technically the best at, at shots. Me and Jake are wild cards. We can get crazy at 
any point and uh, to do a great hole that beats Dave. And anytime we beat Dave in any hole, he's going to throw a little tissy set. But at the same point, our golf game get a little physical. Uh, our last golf game of the year, Jake Chris was actually going up for a eagle, which is one below a birdie. And it's very good in uh, golf terms. First time in his life. And right before he makes the putt, I pants him. So he proceeded to turn around and hit me as hard as he could with a golf club that almost in a fist fight that Dave Chris had to watch on from and split it up. So that's pretty much a relationship in a nutshell. I, I believe that's a penalty stroke if you look at the old course uh, rule book. Uh, and he missed the shot. And he missed the <laughs> shot, which made it that much better. But then we're both in the golf cart, mad, not talking to each other. So you just hurt my feelings. Like, what would you do then? Why would you do that? But we kissed him and we made up. Well, anyway, well, there you go. If you ever want to reinvent yourself again, uh, you could always bring back uh, Shabu Guerrero's Cohen White character. Uh, and, you know, I don't think anyone wants to see that, man. <laughs> I, I think you'd be surprised, actually. When it comes to trash wrestling characters, not wrestling, wrestling characters, I, I'm all over it, honestly. ECW Zombie is still one of my favorite characters ever. But that's another story for another time. Anyway, um, fantastic having you on tonight, Sammy. Really appreciate you giving up the time to come on the show. Uh, and you're welcome. You and the Chris's are welcome back any time at all. It's been an absolute delight. Thank you for your time. Absolutely, man. Anytime you want us, give us a call. Take care. Have a good one, man. Right. Well, there you go, folks. That was uh, Sammy Callahan filling in for Row this week. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I certainly did. Uh, it was actually great to see Sammy uh, a bit out of character for a change. Usually when he does these teleconferences, he's in full character. But I think that's possibly the first time I've heard Sammy uh, actually talk to us in his normal non-wrestling stance. So uh, thank you for that, Sammy. And, and you heard it here first. Uh, the